songs, and I was so bad. <laughs> <laughs> Tasha, let's do it up and down. Who are you texting? We can text. She just did a rent her Sit uh, back, relax. You're gonna have a cappella time in your life. Because that's what we do here. <laughs> we party <laughs> in moderation. <laughs> All things in moderation. But we're gonna start with what we start every Sunday with, and that's reciting our vision mission statement up on the screen. It says, We are an open, loving, spiritual community. Dedicated to evolving consciousness through teaching spiritual principles. So, welcome. Here, I'll make room for here. Here, we'll make room here. So, first thing I want to do is I want to tell you about what happened last week. I wasn't here last week because last Saturday I, uh, let's say, had a date with the universe in a way that was very accidental. I, uh, I'm doing some, some work in my house, and I had uh, gotten up on a chair 
and you know when you're supposed to get up on a ladder <laughs> and and somehow this thing just disappeared from underneath me and i i uh, met it on the uh the, the back side with my back side oh. and uh bam and uh have a little fracture in three of my ribs uh, you know how that goes you know ribs are so okay. so consciously evolving and don't the, sneeze yeah don't sneeze don't cough don't <laughs> no i'm actually beyond that point i'm actually feeling pretty good although if i turn funny it's like whoa there's that there's that reminder but you know, sometimes these things happen. And you know, sometimes we move faster than the infinite is willing to uh, guide us. <laughs> you know, when you get out there in front of your skis, <laughs> stuff happens, you know? So I had an unexpected couple of days off, so. But I'm back. Yay! Yay. Yay. Feeling much better. I'm on the mend. I have a wonderful team of practitioners that I activated Boy, the healing, and right now the energy, do you know the energy is, is there's a lot going on. Mm -hmm. you know, there's a lot happening. So first thing I want to do is talk about our pledge program because we are in the midst of a pledge program. We do this every year where we, get, there's little pledge cards in your seat backs and everybody tells us what they're going to give for the year so the board can plan for our experience. Right now, last week we were at 19,000, and this week we're at 29,000. And our goal is 80,000. That's what our operating expense for the year. So oh, we'll if that helps that. you to decide what you're giving. But I want you guys to know where we're at. I'll give you guys a weekly update so that you guys can support us. Because, you know, somebody, supported this when you guys weren't even a, a glimmer in being here <laughs> and we're supporting it for those people that aren't a glimmer yet but they will be when does the year start fiscal you know, year oh um, that's a good point. The, the year um we're on a, a fiscal so it's uh july 1st through june 30th that's our <laughs> but we're ongoing you know <laughs> we're we're always open and receptive to donations we are completely 100 percent supported by your love and uh, we're celebrating our 50th year in this community and 45th year in this building and i'm going on my eighth year being here yeah so, uh, and we ain't stopping now we're, we're just we're just getting warmed up we're just, we're just starting we're just kind of here so again, I want to thank you all for being here. We have an awesome program planned for you. And right now we're going to stand up and uh, Trish is going to lead us in. Announcements? Oh. Announcements? Oh, oh yeah, we're going to have announcements for, oh, I'm way ahead of my skis here. I'm sorry. No, you're going to do that. All right. Okay. I'm going to invite Jamaica, our board president, up to give us some announcements. Jamaica, please. Our annual meeting is coming up on September the 24th. It's going to be held right after uh, our service at 12 p.m. Uh, we will have our election of trustees, an annual financial report, presentation of our annual budget, and a senior minister's report. Uh, we do need to have a quorum, which means we need to have a majority of our members here in order for us to hold this meeting. So please be sure to mark that on your calendar and uh, be here on the 24th. And uh, hang out with us. And we do have a nominee that would like to join Woo our board. Yay! Caitlin Grant would like to join us, and she is going to try not to give us a presentation on why she would like to join us. So, Ms. Caitlin. Uh -oh. Yeah, I'm coming back real quick here. There we go. I'm wrap it one more time. There we go. 
Hello. 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 Hi. 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 How's everybody doing? Yeah. Yeah. Good. Yeah. Well, I am Kaylin Grant. I moved to Grant Pass 15 years ago. I joined the Unity Church, and now it's gone. And I come into this Grant Pass Center for Spiritual Living, and I felt like, oh, I'm home. <laughs> now, what do I want to serve? What does this mean to me? When I walked into the center five years ago, I felt like I had come home. I had just come from a closed down Unity Church in Grants Pass. One of the first things I saw was the checks and balances practiced in this center. I want to be a part of this. This is my way of giving back. I want to be a part of this decision making. Now, my previous work on other boards is I was the treasurer at the Unity Church for three years. And I was also the secretary of the Grants Pass Kiwanis for seven years. And now I'm serving as their assistant secretary. My previous work was consist of nine audit, 10 years at the Red Line Hotel in Winnemucca. The talents I can bring is answer the Word Excel spreadsheets I'm willing to learn new things. I'm committed to bring my time and talent to this center. Thank you, Kaylin. You're welcome. so blessed. Yeah, yeah. yeah. wonderful mover. Okay. All right, moving on. <laughs> Today, directly after service, uh, they're having an activities meeting. Um, it will be held over in the LEC uh, at noon. So if you would like to be a part of um, some of the upcoming activities or learn more about what is coming up and um, have a little input in that, join them, uh, Miss Wendy and Nicole over in the LEC at noon. <coughs> Next. Musicians, uh, we are calling all musicians and singers. Let's come together and plan our holiday music. We got some good ones in the crowd. We just discovered that today, huh? Hey, hey, guys, we're calling you out. <laughs> we'll start with the evening with a potluck dinner and social time, followed by our meeting that'll start about 5.30 in case people need time to arrive from work. Uh, bring a food to share and your ideas, sheet music and audio samples or background music of winter holiday songs. We'll also be making plans for the holiday party in December. We'll hit the ground running when the practice schedule resumes in early November. So see you there. What's that date? Oh, go back. The, 22nd. the 22nd. Okay, so it's September down. 22nd. Okay. Um, we have a new class beginning this coming up Wednesday, um, so you do have time to sign up still if you'd like to join us. We're going to be um, starting exploring the roots of science of mind. Um, this is a transformational class where we will journey through the minds of new thought luminaries who greatly influenced Ernest Holmes. Um, I will be facilitating this and assisted by Janice. Um, so there is a sign-up sheet available on the back counter. If you guys have any questions, uh, feel free to ask either one of us. And then we also have another new book study group beginning, the Gifts of Imperfection book study group. Uh, this is going to begin on September the 21st, the Thursday, from 3 to 5 p.m. Um, and this is for six weeks. The powerful book by Brene Brown shows you how to embrace your inner flaws to accept who you are instead of constantly chasing the image of who you're trying to be. Embrace authenticity and wholehearted living. There will be experiential exercises, sharing and discussion, and meditations in this deep transformational class. It's $20 per class love offering donation. Um, Deborah Perdue will be uh, facilitating this, and there is a sign-up sheet available in the back counter for that. If you have any questions, you can contact her. 
So collage, I just want to say thank you, a big thank you to Sam. We had a soul collage event here yesterday, and it was just a wonderful turnout. We had a great time. Thank you for that, Sam. And our metaphysical book study group does continue on Sunday mornings from 9 to 9.45. It is being held over in the LEC, and that's led by Reverend Steve. Uh, the book that they are studying right now is Living the Science of Mind. I think we're still, you guys still in that book? Living? Living time, yep. Yeah. Okay. But they will be moving into um, the Science of Mind text for the next few years, probably. Yeah. After that. <laughs> so <laughs> be sure to uh, come on over and join us for that. And then we do have our meditation group directly after that book study group. Um, the practitioners are offering a 15 minute meditation. Um, that begins at 9.05 and goes to 10.05, and that is also held for, I'm sorry, 9.50 to 10.05. Sorry, my dyslexia kicking in there, my bad. Uh, <laughs> and that's held over in the LEC over there as well. And I do think that that is the end of our announcements, so if you would like to stand and join in singing, we are one. Thank you. It's nice to see so many new faces in the world. We are one. We are Welcome to the Grants Pass Center for Spiritual Living. My name is Paula Peterson and I am a licensed practitioner here. And it is my pleasure to be here and see all of your beautiful faces. What a sight, this is gorgeous. Please join me in reading the gratitude. In gratitude, I celebrate my limitless love out loud and so What is a practitioner and what we what do we do on your seat backs there's this gold sheet that explains what a practitioner is is here and there are names and numbers on there also if you feel in need of prayer so please contact us um, we teach classes we pray with people afterwards and um, we pray during the week so if you have a prayer, you can fill it out online. You can also fill out this form. It should be on the seat back in front of you. This is for affirmative prayer. And we'll pray with and for you all week, all, all of the practitioners. And then when you have a demonstration, there's a blue form. And say, hey, I asked for prayer. And wow, look what happened. Because it does. It works. Um, practitioners, if you are here today and available, well, if you're here today, you are going to raise your hand, but if you're here and available for prayer afterwards, please <laughs> raise your hand. One, two, yay, 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 yay. and Bucky. So um, in the back is our powerful Bucky Dinnerline, and she is 
holding a high watch for us today. So she is available for prayer after service. So please see her. And if she is busy with someone else, she will find one, another one, another practitioner to pray with and for you. So don't, don't leave here without prayer. If you want individualized prayer, you see one of us. The flowers today, I believe, are from Chris from last yes, last week. Yes, and look at hope. They're so beautiful. Yeah, thank you, Chris. And now, is anyone here for the first time? We want to welcome you with a gift packet. So please raise your hand. We have lots of new people. Welcome. And please stay afterwards. We have a little food that you can nosh on and um, join us for that afterwards and get to know us. We're a pretty fun group. If you have a cell phone or anything that makes noise, please make sure to uh, silence that now. And now let's read our prayer together. Thank you, Kaylin. I am open and accepting of all. I honor all diverse expressions of love, knowing we are each unique and individual expressions of one. How beautiful and so it is. Please remain seated as we sing, I am loved. I am, I am, I am loved, I am, I am, I am loved. The love of God is in my life. I am loved. And now I have a short reading followed by a blessing for the service, and then we will have special music from Trisha and our wonderful talk from our MC. So probably none of you know this, but I spent many years as a waitress, putting myself through school and just um, working really hard at it. And you might find this hard to believe, but I prided myself on being right. Like I was, you know, like I was like, get everything right. I would, you know, make sure they had everything. And so I, um, you probably get that about me. So um, I want to read this next section. So um, Reverend Dr. David Alt did all the, um, the daily guides for this month. And on um, September 3rd, I think you're going to know why I enjoyed this piece. In 2015, Shiro Aguni opened a pop-up restaurant in Tokyo and hired elderly waiters and waitresses diagnosed with various stages of dementia as waitstaff. <laughs> called the Restaurant of Mistaken Orders, <laughs> Orguni became inspired to bring compassion to those who were isolated and suffering in memory care group homes. He thought there should be more opportunities to keep them included in society. In interviews, Orguni shared his vision of helping society become increasingly more caring, more beautiful, and more easygoing. Clientele understood they might not receive exactly what they ordered. At times, wait staff could forget they were actually working and sit down with customers for conversation. <laughs> Whatever happened, the atmosphere promoted relaxed acceptance. Today, pop-up versions continue in Japan, and restaurants of mistaken orders are being considered in other parts of the globe as critical care initiatives. 
What an example of love, and that is really love out loud, right? Um, and this one final thought by Reverend Dr. David Alt. Humanity seems to be in a critical need for love. The people you work with need love. Your family members need love. You need love. Tell yourself and all the others you connect with how much they matter. You just never know how important your timing may be. And so with that thought, allow yourself to go inward, allowing yourself to feel that love in this room and knowing that is spiritual source energy in, around, and through each one of us. I bless this time together. I bless each one of us and the love that is here. And so it is. And now a short meditation. Coming back to this room, still immersed in that love, we welcome some beautiful music with Treja and Reverend Steve's talk for today. Thank you. Thank you. So I'm going to check one more time and see if it will work. And if not, I have Plan B. <laughs> now, I will say that Plan B is one of my favorite songs. So. I'm not heartbroken if this doesn't work, but I wouldn't have to try. <laughs> Let's just see if this one can work. That is so I can't figure out why it's doing that, so we're just gonna carry on. Going on to something I really enjoy. There you go. <laughs> Maybe we might as well have some fun, right? We can't do it plan. Let's do some fun. Woo! All right. <laughs>
<laughs> and there's another one. And there's the song you missed. <laughs> Let's hear it for Treasure, guys. So our theme for this month is Love Out Loud, and my talk title today is Love on a Spectrum. So spirit expresses as everything. There's not a spot, not a spot. there's not like more of it over there and less of it over there. It's all right here, right now. All genders, because God doesn't have a gender. God is all genders with no gender. Political party? No. Doesn't, doesn't take sides. It is all sides. The infinite laughs as we argue. Like, you're all one. What are you, what are you arguing about? So let's embrace who we truly are without judgment. I know it's hard. It's difficult. You so want people to change. But can you really change anybody? No. no. Who can you change? Yourself. 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 So, yeah, just spend more time working on you. You know, uh, there's an old saying called, you know, you can't teach a pig to sing. It wastes your time and it annoys the pig. So why do we try? Oh, I I know that if I can just get the right information to the pig, it will sing. <laughs> it's not going to happen. But we get caught in this illusion, thinking that we can change things. Now, we have all been through challenging experiences in our lives. I mean, that's what brought us here. And if we were to look at the challenging experience before we walked through it, we go, oh, I'm not, I'm not going to do that. I don't, I, no, that's not for me. And you know, the challenging experience was set up by you, for you, so you would be catapulted into another dimension of consciousness through that challenge. So when we look back on those challenges, we can see that we've had this quiet growth in grace and character because of those challenges, that they have actually given us more insight that we wouldn't have chose. You would have never chose to go through that, but you did. You've come out on the other side. It brought you exactly the experiences you needed for your ultimate growth, or it wouldn't have happened. And here we are. You know, love has no limitations. Every person expresses love and experiences love. But we do it in our own special way. You know, I, I don't care what sexual orientation you are. You know, I have a preference myself, but I don't judge anybody because of their preferences, because I don't want to be judged. Judge not, right? There's more love in the world. I don't care who you're loving. Maybe you love a dog. I love my dog. <laughs> don't judge me because I love my dog. <laughs> so, some people prefer, prefer other genders. That's okay. For them, you know, who am I to judge? You know, our cultural norms may lead the people around us to be critical of our choices to express love authentically. You know, sometimes we judge. I mean, let's just be frank, we do. Something comes up before us and we, we put a label on it. But before you do, maybe you just go, you know what? It is what it is. That's one of our favorite sayings. I mean, what are you going to do? It is what it is. You know, Celebrating our love out loud helps normalize different ways of expressing love and inspires others to embrace their own expression of love. What do you love? 
And why do you love it? You know, when you look at a flower, what is it about the flower that makes it beautiful? Well, it is resonating with something within you that holds that same beauty. And there's that namaste experience. Namaste. The source energy in me sees the source energy in you. That's a connection. That's the connection we see in beauty when we see something that we love. Maybe you, you know, love an animal or a bass guitar or <laughs> fill in the blank. Why do you love what you love? And is somebody going to judge you for that? And if they are, that's on them. Let it be on them. Don't let it change your love. Because if you love it, there's more love in the world. And that's what we need is more love in this world. You know, when you put the news on and you're like, oh man, this is, this is depressing. Well, it's a prayer request. It's an opportunity to go, you know what? I know that there is God right in the middle of that challenge. And when you call that forth, it starts to transform that challenging experience. Look for the helpers. Look for the helpers. Look at the, for the people that rush into situations to help. That's God in action. Who put that in them that they want to love that? There's a story uh, Wayne Dyer tells about um, this uh, person of challenge that was having financial challenges down by the river. And he saw a lady there who had means and he asked for some food. And as she was going through her bag, he noticed a large gem. <clears throat> and it was a very priceless gem. Could probably feed a family for a year. <clears throat> and he said, I want that. And she said, you want this? Here you go. And he looked at her and he looked at the gem and he walked away. And he came back the next day and said, I want something else from you. I want what is within you that allowed you to give that to me. That's love. That's love, right? And that's that feeling we get when we give. You know what? Why does a child want a dolly or a puppy? Because they want to love it. They want to have that experience and expression of love. That is the power of source, goddess, fill in the blank, whatever you want to call it, energy at work. That's that feeling that you're connected to something. You love the beauty of the flower. It's that connection that we look for. So if God is love, and love is all there is, our authentic expression must be love in action. That's why we're here, is for more love in the world. The Science of Mind uh, textbook by Dr. Ernest Holmes states on page 460, God is love and God is law. The love of God is omnipresent and the law of God is omnipresent. The love of God is the divine givingness the eternal outpicturing to spirit through its creation. It's creating out of the love of itself. You know why we're here? Because God wanted to have lunch. God, goddess, Christ consciousness, whatever you want to call it, wanted to have an experience. He wanted to rub up against something. And here we are. So what's your love? And why do you love what you love? Do you know? We are that outpicturing of spirit. We have been created in the image and likeness of God. And we return the favor by creating our God in the image and likeness of us, which is not the truth. <laughs> we think, you know, where I grew up, 
They taught me that it was a guy on a cloud with a clipboard and a lightning bolt, you know, <laughs> ready to throw down if I did something wrong, put my, put my name on a list somewhere, right? But it doesn't work that way. God doesn't make mistakes, and neither do you. If you do, and you don't learn from it, then you make mistakes again. But it's when we have something that goes sideways, that we learn something in how not to do something, that the love is exposed. We love not to make mistakes, so hopefully we won't revisit it in the same way. See, everything is spiritual. Everything is love. You can't separate the two. Who you are, <coughs> is who you were meant to be. Each one of us was brought into this moment in history in the communities that we're born into for a divine purpose. No mistakes, no extra parts. Like your bicycle at Christmas, my dad always gave me a bag of extra parts. Here's your bike and I don't know where these go. God doesn't do that. God puts it all together or knows that those spare parts are gonna be something you need on another project. I always knew where that reflector went on my brother's bicycle. <laughs> he loves that. I know, John, you're going, don't put reflectors on my bike. <laughs> so here's my three talking points for today. First, we are perfect just the way we are. You don't need to shift and change and be someone different. You don't have to get thinner or heavier or less gray or more gray or older or thinner or whatever. You are perfect right now. Get off trying to play this silly little game of changing yourself into something else. Use that energy to love rather than to change into something that you're just gonna be upset with when you do it. You know, oh, I like it better the other way. <laughs> You know, gender identities, sexual orientations, and ethnic heritages that we are born into are the divine imprints of spirit that we are gifted with from source energy. There are reasons, but we don't know those reasons. It has not been revealed yet. I love that saying. Well, is that, how's that gonna work out? Well, it has not been revealed yet. <laughs> We're in the process. The paint is still drying in my life. <laughs> Each of us was purposely brought into this plane of existence, onto this planet, and born into these communities. We were raised at exactly the right time for you to be here now. All of your challenges have brought you to this moment. Give great thanks for them. The minute you start thanking your challenges, you have learned the lesson of life. All of a sudden, the challenges don't need to show up anymore. When a message has been delivered, the messenger disappears. And all of a sudden, you're exactly where you need to be. So our lives are a divine appointment. When something comes up that isn't my favorite thing, my affirmation is, this too is good, this too is God, and I demand to see the blessing in this right here and right now. What does that do? It shifts the energy of whatever I'm walking through to be something that is good for me. I just have to find out, you know, you're clever, God. I can figure this out, though. You gave me a couple brain cells. I can figure this out. Hopefully I spent them somewhere. But, but we need to figure some stuff out. And sometimes we, we go to figure it out, and we just can't figure it out. You ever been a, uh, had a situation where you just can't figure it out? And then you go and you take a break and you come back the next day and the answer has been revealed. You're like, oh, could have had a V8. I, I could have, if I had just walked away sooner, I could have had the answer sooner. But see, we, we want to figure it out. 
and there's no figuring it out. You're never gonna get it all done. Stop trying to get it all done. I have lists so long. I'm a list, I'm a list maker, taker. I mean, I, I, if I am out on errands and I stop on an unexpected errand, I'll stop and put it on my list and cross it off. Because, did you say anybody else? Yeah, no, just me, yeah. Because I want to know that I got something done. And later I want to remember that I got one more thing on my list done that was not scheduled. Number two. Love exists on a spectrum. It includes light and dark, comfort and discomfort, <clears throat> and the darkness may, may be uncomfortable. It may be challenging. Though I walk through the valley of the shadow, I will not pitch a tent, I will not build a condo there, I will continue walking, I will not buy a t-shirt, <laughs> I will not get double prints. You continue walking through it. The minute you stop, you anchor into the challenge. Growth comes with some form of discomfort. Now, I don't know why that is. And I'm, when I get to the next plane of existence, I mean, I'm a little child. I want things to be easy and beautiful. And, and then I think, you know, if they were easy and beautiful, I probably wouldn't have been moved to do them, you know? But they're challenging. It hurts. You know what it took to get your soul into this body? To squeeze you in? This is not easy. But you did it, and you're here. And now it's time to make the best of it. You don't want to look back and go, well, I wish I would have loved more. Just love more right now. Every time you see something beautiful, love it. Even when you see something unbeautiful, Love it too. Love it all. And go, you know what? That's not to my liking, but I know that there's love in there somewhere. I know that somebody loves that. God bless them. It is in making our discomfort our growing edge that these challenges become our greatest assets. And if you look back on some of your biggest challenges, they have become some of your biggest triumphs because you hurdled it. You may have fallen, but you picked yourself up, you dusted yourself off, and you started over again. You are only a failure when you stop trying. Lifting weights, it's uncomfortable. Oh, boy, I didn't think about it right now. But it creates a healthier body. It gets, it gets the adrenaline pumping through our veins. How does that work? You know when you go on a good run and you just feel good, your endorphins are all working and you're just like, wow, I work my body. There's something to that. Sweet, or sweat, <laughs> sweet, sweat, oils, and fats taste better than raw kale, but leafy greens are the healthiest food to support our bodies. Growing pains. You ever had growing pains? You ever had spiritual growing pains? <laughs> where you were called to a higher conscious dimension and you didn't want to go. <laughs> nope, I'm good right here. I'm comfortable in my uncomfortableness. Don't try to change me. And there comes a time when the pain of hanging on is more than the pain of letting go. And you let go. And you realize that you have just drifted onto a beautiful beach instead of hanging on to the rock in the middle of a river. But I know that rock. It's got my hand claws in it. So let go and let God. Grow up. Now I'm not saying, oh, now just grow up. Spiritually evolve. You wouldn't be here if you weren't interested in evolving in some manner. And that's why we're here. We're we want to know that we are on the right path. And if spirit stood before you and handed you a card, you know what it would say? You're doing great work. Keep going. You're exactly where you need to be. Keep going. Keep doing what you're supposed to be doing because you're doing it. You're on the right track. 
Doesn't that feel good though? Like, gosh, I'm just I'm wondering if I'm okay. Yeah. You're okay. It's all okay. The science of mind points out that we have no reason to suffer. That this does not imply that life does not come without some discomfort. Growth is mandatory and suffering is optional. Now, it's when we stay in the suffering and we continue to perpetuate it that we get into trouble. You know, we, we get used to it. That's that substitutionary fulfillment. If I can't have what I want, I can have the pain of not having what I want and then tell everybody about it for the rest of my life. And that's my excuse for not having what I want. I'm not a man. Ouch. Man, I'm so glad I got out of that damn way. Because I was, I, was, I mean, the mailman wouldn't deliver packages to my door anymore because I was telling him how uncomfortable I was about everything in my life. Mm, no, nope. you're going to have to pick this up at the P.O. box. <laughs> Comfort is sometimes overrated. Discomfort is the energy that moves us into places we might not normally invite into our experience. But that's what makes it a transformative experience. All experiences of love support our growth, regardless of the challenges that they may pose. There is no such thing as a failed relationship. You know, maybe you've had a divorce. Oh, it was a failed relationship. Oh, it wasn't. It brought exactly what you needed to know that that was not where you wanted to be. It's perfect. Yeah. It's when you stay in it, you know, for the kids or, oh, well, you know, we've come this far. It's like, hey, man, wake up. There is a whole great big beautiful tomorrow shining at the edge of every day <laughs> well, Disney for you so thirdly love expresses itself in every color despite the fact that people in interracial uh, interracial relationships around the world have had to fight for the right to love who they want to love love expresses itself as every gender in every country who even those that deny the rights to same gender loving or individuals i mean that's 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 theirs let it be theirs if it's not your thing don't criticize it you don't want people criticizing you for what you love so don't criticize them romantic relationships have mostly been betrayed between two people but you can love a whole bunch of people. You can. You don't have to make just one. And like part of Chris is going, uh, are we gonna have a little talk about that? <laughs> <laughs> what I'm saying is that there's enough love to go around. There is enough love to go around. Now, I think that we need the commitment of a special partner in our life. And if you don't have a special partner, make that partner you. Love yourself so much that you don't need any external relationship to fulfill you. And all of a sudden, you'll become attractive. People will want to be around that energy. That's how attraction works, is that you become something of value. You know, there's a, people that go to bars, you know, to find people that go to bars. <laughs> But it seldom works out. I mean, there's times that it does. It does, it happens. But, you know, you take a bunch of desperate people and put them in a room and, and <laughs> you know, they're, they're eventually going to find other desperate people. That's just how it works. And, and we've all seen people that are desperate in places like that. And, you, you know, you can almost smell their desperation. You know, there's like, there's like an energy zone around them. They're just like looking at everything, trying. That's not how it works. When you love from within, you become the love and so powerful that you get fulfilled. And then it doesn't matter if somebody comes into your life or not. That's a byproduct of your own love. You are already <laughs> loved. The infinite loved you so much that it gave the ultimate gift. You have life. You have life. And you get to do with whatever you want. You get to pick your own favorite color and your own 
kind of ice cream. <laughs> when we love out loud, we help shift, shift the world towards acceptance of all forms of love. Love is love. So in conclusion, recognizing that love expresses in all its forms and that our personal understanding of love is unique to us, begins to broaden our understanding, our expression of love itself. We start to open up to different ideas about love. And all of a sudden, we're given different modalities to love and love deeper and more whole, holy, more holistically. Love exists on a spectrum. So our own understanding of a love falls in different places on that spectrum. No one relationship is exactly like another. We have the opportunity to recognize that all of our relationships have contributed to becoming who and what we are, even the so-called failed ones. Because now you know what you don't like. How else would you know? Openly exploring our personal understanding of love inspires us to apply that same level of compassion for everyone. And that is love. And so it is. So it is. So it is. Well, time for us to follow our teaching. Let's just take a moment and remember who we are. So I invite you to close your eyes if that's comfortable or take a soft focus on the candles or the flowers. But let's remember who we are for a moment and bring to the forefront of your consciousness what you believe love is for you. What is that power of creation that brought you to this moment? What is that power? I think we can agree that each one of us has been divinely guided to this very moment. Each one of us is a divine outpicturing of the love of the universe for itself, and that's why we're here. I may not know what your challenge or situation is, but I know that the infinite does. And as we begin to move our focus from the challenge to the solution, from the it isn't happening to it happening, we begin to open our consciousness in a way that attracts the answers, attracts the love, attracts the beauty and the wholeness of the spectrum of love that we are. I know that all the right cells in our body are going to all the right places for the perfect healing. That all the things in our life are moving in just the perfect place for the ultimate in our life. As we turn away from what doesn't work, not to deny it, but not to give it any more power, we begin to turn into love itself. And when we are doing love, love is doing us. And that is the reason for being. For if love is at the heart and center of whatever you do, you will prosper, you will succeed, and you are already a success. So we give great thanks for that health, the healing, the abundance of the universe that's happening right now for each one of us. How good it is to know that something wonderful is happening right now by means of each one of us <clears throat> as we let go. Releasing this word directly into the living, loving law of mind where it is already done. As we affirm this together by saying, So it is. So it is. Amen. <sighs> okay, it's time for our offertory idea about sharing. And if you'd like to take your, your gift and put it on your heart, or take your hand and put it on your heart, we will recite this together. As I give freely today, I know that I am gifted with ever-increasing abundance and prosperity. 
Bless the giver and the receiver and allow this, the Grants Pass Center for Spiritual Living, to be open, available, allowing people who are wanting to remember who they are a place to express, even for those who may not know it yet. And for that, this community thrives with love, abundance, health, and divine right action. As we affirm it together by saying, so it is. So it is. All right, let's stand up and sing our final song, shall we? Okay, here we go, all right? <laughs> so let there be peace. I am a stand for peace. Let there be love. I am a stand for love. Let there be joy. Wonderful is happening right now. Something wonderful is happening right now. It's happening in my mind. It's in, my mind. in my body. In my body. In my body. And in the body of my affairs. In the body of my affairs. I think it. I, I think it. it. I feel it. I feel it. And I know it. I know it. I know it. <laughs> Just the way that it is. Just, Just the way, way it is. is. And Just the way that it is not. Just the way it is. Thank you, life. Thank you, life. Have a great day.